Hi there, so I'm here today to show you my latest project which is a window manager implemented on an AVR microcontroller. So what that means is I've got a, a graphical user interface implemented on a very small and resource constrained microcontroller uh, with windows that can be dragged around just like you would have on your standard desktop PC. Um, these windows can be created, destroyed, moved, layered, minimized, closed, all that you know usual window management stuff. So I'm going to give you a tour of the software first that's running on this screen here and then I'll show you the hardware later. Alright, so here I am behind the camera with the software loaded up on the screen. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that I've got a cursor and it's really really fast. That's coming in uh, from an old school Microsoft serial mouse, something they made back in the 90s, but um, it's quick. There's no lag, it moves you know, full speed just as you would expect on a regular computer. Um, after that, basically, um, You've got these windows here. I've got three windows on the screen by default. Uh, one is a theme manager, which assigns colors to different aspects of the system theme. One is an audio player, which will play back some audio. And one is a window factory, which creates more windows for the purposes of demonstration. So I'm going to create a couple windows here. Uh, they just come up in the top corner. Empty window is their title, and they're, they're pretty small. So I can create a few of these and uh, put them into position. And you'll notice that when I drag a window, it turns into a wireframe outline of that window. And the uh, reason for that is just to, to keep things fast. Uh, the VGA controller that I use does have a copy and paste feature, so I could theoretically copy and paste the window, and it would behave like a stuck window manager, like uh, back in the days of XP when Explorer would stop responding. But uh, I've decided to just keep it as a wireframe. The copy-paste function is extremely slow on, this pro on the VGA controller, so... Uh, wireframe is the the best way to do it for this application. Uh, so you can see here I've got four windows in a stack and they're all layered as accordingly. If I click this one here, it'll come up to the front just like that. I can close it and now it'll be destroyed basically. I've also got a taskbar down here which keeps track of all the windows that are open on the system. So I can, for example, minimize, uh, let's say, the audio player and it'll go down into the tray. You don't see it anymore. It also speeds up the drawing process. And then I can bring it back by clicking on it and it'll come back up on the desktop. Um, you'll also notice that with these three windows, if I click on a background window, it'll bring it up to the foreground, just like you'd expect uh, when you're using your computer. And I can close off all these windows here and get us back to our usual spot. Um, the this is really powerful, this whole you know, idea of having windows on a microcontroller. Um, you can control hardware, you can make you know, very, very um, simple human-machine interfaces you know, for, say, reading a voltage or uh, controlling something, having buttons, uh, indicators, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So now I'm going to take you over and give you a quick tour of the hardware, and then I'll flip back and give you a tour of the theme manager and audio player. So this is the hardware here. It consists of three components. I've got an Atmega 1284 microcontroller here, uh, which is running 128K of program memory and 16K of RAM. I've got my micro VGA VGA controller, which handles all the timing and buffering and all that stuff. And then I've got an RS-232 port here connected to a Microsoft serial mouse, which I'm using for human, uh, human interface with the hardware. Uh, and that's pretty much it, aside from the programming header and the audio interface, which is more or less optional. Just makes the whole thing a lot of fun. Alright, so the uh, two applications that I wanted to show you were the theme manager and the, uh, the audio player. So first I'll, I'll play a little bit with the theme manager. Um, you'll notice that these windows have a few accent colors. I've got this kind of a light line here, uh, as well as on the top of the windows, and I've got a dark line to create the impression of um, 3D, essentially. You've got inset and outset boxes. Um, so what I can do um, is drag these sliders, actually, and, and change the amount of color that's, that's in each of the channels. So now I've got a bit of a bluish, kind of green, uh, light accent color. So uh, one of the interesting color themes that I like is when you make the whole thing green. So if I take away all of the red and blue channels, uh, take the green all the way over for the light color. And the light color you can see really obviously. Now the light color is wherever you've got kind of a light falling over it. So you've got it on the top of the window, on the top of the buttons, and so on. Now I'll take it over to the dark color and I will take away the red and the blue components. And we can make this a bit brighter. 
And then in the background color, I can do the same. I can take away the red. You can see the drastic change there. And then uh, the blue. And uh, tone down the green a bit. You can see that it looks really neat. It looks kind of like an 80s terminal emulator, even though it's got windows. <laughs> um, I can maybe break this, bring this up just a bit. And yeah, th th this is all happening in real time. You can see it's affecting the status or the taskbar, other windows on the system. Um, and it's it's modifying the appearance of itself, or I'm asking it to change its own appearance. Um, the way I've structured the code is I could actually have different themes for different windows. So if I wanted to have a green window and a, a pink window, it, it would work. Um, I just, for the simplicity of this demo, I've kept it all as the same global theme. Um, the other really neat app that I decided to put together is the audio player. And that takes advantage of the uh, wave playback functionality of the micro VGA, VGA controller. Uh, for some reason it has an audio playback device. It's kind of useful, I guess, if you wanted to sound an alarm or play some kind of tone or something. Um, but basically I can click here. This is a volume control. I've got a pause and a resume button. And clicking these buttons will actually start the playback of the song. So here I'm going to start one up just now. Uh, you know what? First I better connect it to my amplifier. Let's bring that over there. Alright, so I can play a song now. And let me turn the volume up just a bit. So you can hear the music. This is all coming in uh, through, this, through the system. And I can change the volume in real time just like that. Pretty neat. Um, bring it all the way to max. I can also pause the song, resume the song. And these are all commands that are built into the VGA controller. And I can change the song as well. I can pause it, change the song. Uh, the only limitation is it doesn't remember the pause for different wave files, so it's a bit of a limitation, but it's uh, not a huge problem. And there is also no way for me to manually seek the audio file, so that's a bit of a limitation as well. Otherwise, I would have another uh, slider underneath to control the playback head of the of the the wave player, essentially. And if you notice, there's a bit of a buffer underrun if you drag a window because it's calling a clear screen command, which is apparently a little bit expensive. Um, you can hear it in the audio. I'll, I'll do it a couple times and listen closely. So you can hear the buffer underruns there happening. Um, one interesting side effect of the way that I'm handling mouse events is I've got a ring buffer to store all the incoming commands. And if I... If I do something expensive that takes a while, longer than it takes to process a usual mouse event, they'll get queued up. So uh, if I click this window, say, two or three times before it has a chance to finish repainting, it'll actually run the queue out. It'll actually finish its job, um, which can be a bit of a nuisance, actually, because sometimes you inadvertently click a bunch of times, or you're impatient, and you click three times just for no reason. Um, so the solution would be for me to purge the, the mouse events before I carry on with the system. but. For now, it works. It's just a prototype. And uh, I can also change the system theme here again. I also like the, the blue, blue appearance, so let's give it some dark blue. So you can see the difference now, it's all turning blue, and finally we can change the background color. We can either make it fully black, which looks pretty neat, but uh, I usually like to have a bit of a tint in there, so I can drag the blue up just a bit and give it some green as well. One thing I haven't done actually is you can also change the text color. Um, typically I, I prefer white on dark, that's my usual preferred color scheme, high contrast they call it but uh, it's fully configurable. Uh, the cursor can also be changed, I just haven't exposed it as, a, as an option here. Um, it would just make the utility too big, and I, I thought the white cursor seems to be uh, fairly visible at all times, so. So yeah, I hope you like this project. Uh, let me just turn down the volume here a bit.
hope you like this project. Um, put a lot of time into it, pushing about 3,000 lines of code. Um, and there are a few bugs. Um, I don't know if you saw earlier, but when sometimes if you drag a window, it'll glitch out and draw a whole bunch of white squares, but uh, typically it recovers just fine. Just unusual little graphical glitches. Um, another one is if you, if you drag a slider, uh, it tends to kind of hold back an artifact of the mouse cursor. Um, the reason is that this hardware doesn't actually support a sprite. So I've kind of implemented a, a sprite in software by uh, paging into off-screen memory. So I take a sample, uh, draw the screen, and then paste that sample back in place again. And it, it works most of the time. The only problem is if the screen changes between samples, then, then you end up with a bit of an artifact. But um, I haven't really found it to be that annoying, so I've just been leaving it since the beginning. And uh, I still think it works pretty well. <laughs> So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will be sharing this code eventually. Um, it's not quite ready yet. Uh, I don't think it'll ever be ready, but I'm planning to get it to a point where I'm happy with it and, uh, and I can show it off to the internet and you guys can mull it over and make tweaks and make it better and yeah, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching.